Has your network been breached? Cyber Reason can help you answer this question. Cyber Reason products hunt for threats within your network and eliminate them in real time. To Cyber Reason, real time means within seconds. Founded by former military hackers who don't play by the rules, they've built this experience into their platform. Harness ingenuity and imagination, not just code, to defeat attackers. Cyber Reason, disrupt the adversary and let the hunt begin. The average time between being hacked and realizing you've been hacked is one year. Can you afford to let an intruder roam your network for that long? Can your company weather the fallout when this comes to light? Black Hills Information Security can find the bad guys in your network and train you to do it yourself. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to find out how a hunt teaming engagement can help you find a persistent threat in your network. Endgame automates the hunt for both known and never before seen adversaries in enterprise networks. Built on unique knowledge on the adversary's tools, techniques, and tactics, Endgame's centrally managed agent prevents, detects, and responds to advanced adversaries in the earliest stages of the kill chain without prior knowledge. Endgame, automate the hunt. Welcome back everyone to Security Weekly. Paul Security Weekly, in fact. I got an announcement for you. IT Pro TV's courses now include Sierra Update, Let's Encrypt, ITIL SOA, and ITIL Pro. Uh, premium annual memberships include all video content as well as access to virtual labs and Q&A forums. You pay $85.70 per month, hopefully, or $857 per year, hopefully is what you pay, for the yearly premium membership subscription. Um, there is a limited time offer, 50% off a monthly membership for lifetime uh 50% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. So um, visit the uh, itpro.tv, whatever the URL is in, in front of the thing, because I don't have that in front of me because it's in the other commercial that we're going to run on the show. But you can go to IT Pro's website and IT Pro TV's website and get 50% off. SW50 is the code. Uh, SW50 will get you 50% off IT Pro TV. Uh, Dom Pizet is coming on the show after this. It's actually, for those watching live, it's a pre recorded segment. Um, I watched, I talked with Don about this segment in the uh, Hack Naked News show this week. Don has a pre recorded segment on actually how to do the things he talked about, um, which we'll talk about next. This segment, though, um, <clears throat> I'm the only one here. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Arlo wireless camera system uh, that I have sitting right here. This is it. It is the Arlo. It's from Netgear. And as soon as I say Netgear, I cringe when I think about security and using these for a security camera. Um, <clears throat> I think I summed it up kind of nicely when I wrote this up in the wiki, wiki.securityweekly.com. This is episode 506. Um, I said it. the Arlo line from Netgear is basically wireless battery-powered uh, cameras. They do update frequently and automatically, uh, and you can manage them from a cloud-based either mobile application or a website. The cameras are like decent quality video, I would say. The motion, <coughs> excuse me, the motion settings are not reliable. They're not great. The quality is okay. They're 720p cameras now. You can uh, also put on wired cameras to this system as well. It uses the same base station controller. So this kit that I have here, um, if I were to open it up, I don't know. Do I want to do that on the air? I'm not sure. I want to do that on the air, but because uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to open this. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. It does come with a base station and one camera. And that's the kit that I bought. Um, that's in here. And I'm actually going to use this one in the studio. You can have multiple controllers connected uh, to your account. And uh, this isn't the controller, I can tell. That's just that's just like an Ethernet cable and a power adapter, apparently, and some screws. Okay, that's wonderful. Thanks for that. Um, this is the base station uh, that comes with it. <coughs> and then there's different um, monthly subscriptions depending on how many cameras. So it's all cloud-based. Uh, so this is the base station. Basically, I mean, this thing is like a black box, man. Like, you power this on, you plug it into the network, and you uh, push the buttons to pair the cameras, and you're off to the races, right? Uh, then in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. The reason I have a new one is because I had to return one. What was interesting, 
this particular base station I had wasn't connecting to the network. And the, the, it just wasn't coming online. I was getting errors on the mobile app going, hey, can't find your base station, can't find your base station. So finally, I hooked it up to a, a, a sniffer. I used TCP dump on my laptop. I was looking at the DHCP traffic. I was looking at my DHCP server logs. And I determined that the one weird thing that I could determine, it was getting an IP address. The MAC address was weird. The MAC address was like zero, zero, and then all Fs after it. And I was like, well, that's kind of, that's weird. That shouldn't like happen. And then I'm like, well, maybe it's my DHCP server. I changed DHCP servers. I brought it here to the office network because that was my home network. It still wouldn't get an IP address. It was still having that wonky MAC address. So I exchanged it uh, for a new one, which was interesting. So... Um, I want to just talk a little bit about the bad and the good from a security perspective. Um, we may run a, a follow-up segment because I know both Larry and I think Michael Santarcangelo um, do have... Uh, I can actually... This base station will go over here so you can see it. Um, Michael Santarcangelo both have, I believe, this particular system. Now, the one thing that I don't like about it, it does not support any kind of two-factor authentication. So... It does have on a mobile app, you can set it up to do your fingerprint reader, but that just acts as one factor, like one and done factor authentication. In other words, I start the app, I use my fingerprint, and then that authenticates me. So there's no two-factor authentication uh, to their system, which means if someone wants to go on like a password stealing or guessing rampage to get access to all of these cameras in my house uh, or anyone's house that has this system, they could do that. So I wasn't not a big fan of that. Uh, lack of a feature. The one thing I did talk about is that the, the cameras and the controllers are meant to be a black box solution. Like I, I NMAP port scanned the, the snot out of this thing and it had like one port open, which as far as I could tell, my limited testing did did nothing, didn't respond to any of my commands. Uh, it was just an open port and, and that's it. Uh, I'll talk about some articles in a moment. The connection between the camera and the base station uh, in, in, in how that works is basically very simple 802.11 uh, style traffic between the two and someone was able to exploit it and uh, replay streams and, and things of that nature. However, you know, to get this camera <clears throat> to pair to this base station, I mean, essentially what they want you to do is like you power this thing on, right? You plug it into your network. Then you put batteries in your camera because the cameras are battery uh, powered. Uh, this particular model is, and like you push this button, yeah, this that button on the side of the base station, and then you push the button on the top of the uh, the camera. The packaging is terrible. Like to get at that, I, I I need. Wait a minute, can I? No, I need I need to like get out. What is that? I need to get out my pocket knife to like cut that thing free. Anyway, you push the button on the on the camera, and they sync. They sync together. They sync a key. Uh, together and so like if you're looking for a web interface on the base station or you're looking for some way to like uh, ssh in the camera uh not going to find that on this particular system so uh you have to basically go to the cloud to manage all of this which if the cloud isn't available or your cloud gets hacked you're pretty much screwed wasn't a big fan of that um <clears throat> there's no security settings like if you're looking for like a way to like turn on encryption or turn on SSL or turn on any kind of security style settings, doesn't exist. Um, there's no information about kind of like a denial of service uh, pre prevention or even detection. In other words, if I have all of these cameras in my house and someone wants to disrupt or disassociate them from the base station, uh, it's likely a pretty simple 802.11 attack. I mean, you can always... Any wireless device is vulnerable to just jamming a particular channel. Uh, however, with very basic wireless gear, you could probably figure out how to disrupt the system, uh, which I found kind of scary from uh, a security perspective. There are, are There is some information uh, about keeping your videos private and secure, and there's a link in the show notes to that. Now, what if someone's going to steal my camera, right? The motion detection is kind of lame, and basically, you could probably run up to the camera or put a mask on and just go steal the camera, like at my house. Please, I mean, don't do that because that would suck because the cameras are like around, I think I want to say I got some 
uh, I can look those up. You can find them refurbished on Amazon um, for a good price. Uh, and you can you can buy kits and stuff like that. Uh, I will. You know what? I didn't put the price, but they're kind of they're at least uh, fifty to one hundred bucks for for one of these cameras, depending on if you get them refurbished or not. Now, refurbished could be like someone went to someone's house that they didn't know and just stole the camera, because there's really nothing that prevents someone from stealing the camera. I mean, they're battery operated, so there's no like power supply to them, so you can put them anywhere. Someone can just walk up and, like, take it and be like, woo, that's fine, great. I'll push the button and pair it to a new base station, and uh, you're off to the races, which is kind of scary, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so there are some things where people talk about uh, products that are available to do that. I can't remember if it was 50 or or $100 for my um, refurbished camera. It was a hundred. That's one hundred forty-seven. Hold on, hold on. I want to look that up because I want to make sure I get that right. This is the refurb. The refurbished one is a hundred dollars a camera. So I mean, they are kind of pricey. Um, so some people suggested that you get a dome. They sell a dome that you can put this inside of a dome. And they sell the plastic dome. They're cheap, like five or ten bucks, and you put it in the dome, which means basically someone has to unscrew this dome or break the dome and do more work to steal the camera. Um, which is probably what I'm going to do at my house for some of my cameras, uh, is put them inside of a dome, uh, which also protects them from uh, the elements. The other thing about the dome is you, to change the battery, which depending on what kind of battery you use, I hear people get anywhere from a couple of months to six months on decent, uh, nice batteries, uh, not the ones that come with it. The ones that come with it are complete crap. Better batteries that you buy on Amazon or Battery Junction or wherever you get your uh Whatever this takes, a CR, CR123A, CR123, I believe is the battery that it takes. Uh, and it takes four of them, so you're going to need a lot of batteries to run this camera system. Um, you do have to, like, take that dome down and then to swap the batteries out. Uh, the good batteries that I used, I've been getting pretty good battery life, and that depends on the features. Okay. So, now some of the good, um, question mark, like good, it's kind of good. Firmware updates. Firmware updates are released automatically to all connected Arlo devices. Automatic updates happen between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, to minimize camera downtime. So, Netgear is all, since so one of the advantages of being all cloud based like this is it basically pushes out these updates to all these systems automatically, uh, which I think is great. Now, um, there are, have been some vulnerabilities. There was kind of a lame like Wi-Fi default password security vulnerability that essentially means like. When this base station is new and when this camera is new or if you're going to reset it, when they exchange the, the key, there's a default key. So if you knew that key, <coughs> key uh, you could perform attacks and things like that. Um, and during that time, they are, they are vulnerable and you can sniff the key, whatever. Um, so that, that was kind of lame. That link is in the show notes. It's a Nick Gear article. Um, now, Larry has told me, and we'll, we do an updated segment on this. It, we'll use that as an opportunity to talk a little more about how they... Uh, communicate. There is a blog, NewSkySecurity.com. I guess it was a couple of researchers working on the security of this, um, and this is the one that I found. But Larry said there was a little bit of uh, controversy there, uh, as opposed to who uh, did this um, particular research. Um, so th they do use uh, WPA uh, encrypted network, and there are articles out there. This one shows you how to. Uh, crack the code uh, for that WPA WPA2 uh, password share. Uh, and there's a lot of information about how the Wi Fi works between the cameras and the base station on these systems on the links that I put in the show notes. So if you have this system or you're thinking about potentially purchasing uh, this system and you're like, wow, I want to like hack this thing, and how do the cameras talk and have all the questions that I had? Save yourself some Google searching time. Go to wiki.securityweekly.com, episode 506. I linked to two great articles where someone wrote up. Um, they actually got like a serial console on the base station. Um, they sniffed all the wireless traffic. So someone has done all that work for you. Go read those articles before you start researching the security of them. And Larry and I and Michael will probably follow up with some more in-depth analysis on the wireless front. But I want to give everyone here uh, kind of an overview of what I thought about the security of these devices. Um, I would say it's kind of mediocre uh, at this time. I think the cloud uh, ness of it gives some 
good and bad kind of thing. But um, overall, I'm I'm somewhat happy with it. Um, I you know I'm going to continue to to research it and find better batteries and find uh, hopefully better ways of securing it and uh, do some wireless sniffing uh, of my own. I, I think too though, <clears throat> if you look at the the goals for this camera, right? Like I want if someone's walking around when they're not supposed to on my property to be able to find that. Uh, there are a lot of great use cases of doing that. I think I'll still keep my ring doorbell for my front door as well as kind of like a backup. Um, the ring, in terms of motion sensing and quality of video, I found uh, better than this particular camera. The other thing I want to experiment with is they make power over Ethernet cameras that work with this system. They're supposedly much better uh, quality, and so I want to look at some of those as well. So... Uh, we'll probably do a follow-up segment on this when I have some of the other cast and crew here that are actually using this and researching the security of them. So that was kind of part one of the Arlo wireless camera system uh, security. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back with Don Pizet from IT Pro TV. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.